This is my spoiler-filled review of Mom and Dad. We did a reaction to the trailer. It looked good. We were a little concerned that it was going to be, you know, safe and predictable. So was it? Let's find out. I gotta let everybody know up front, this is gonna be a spoiler-filled review. So if you haven't seen the movie yet, go check it out. Alright, you're here. So, uh, to make sure we're all on the same page, there's actually uh, several other movies named Mom and Dad. Uh, surprise, surprise. So, this one, uh, basically, Nicolas Cage. Okay, we're done. No. Uh, <laughs> Nicolas Cage and Selma Blair are parents to two obnoxious, horrible children. And something occurs, completely nondescript, um, possibly transmitted over TV waves, but who knows, that drives them to kill, and not just them, but all parents to kill their children. <sighs> Sounds like a dream come true. All right, we start off with likes and, well, what's not to like? <laughs> no, okay, obviously the premise is something that, that, that I appreciate, I like. Uh, not necessarily that it's nondescript. Um, I could kind of handle that. But obviously the idea of the children, children? The parents killing their children is absolutely wonderful. Um, you know, from the trailer, uh, it looked like there was going to be a little bit in, you know, even the trailer gave it away, so it wasn't a surprise or a twist. The grandparents show up. Well, of course, their children are the parents trying to kill their children, etc., etc. However, digging deeper, what I really liked about this film, even above and beyond that, was that it demonstrated how absolutely horrible having children truly is. Truly, truly is. And I know, everyone's going to get on here and go, oh, that's not true, they're wonderful, it's worth all the pain and suffering. It's not. It's not. Movie shows that. You know, they, they, they are completely ungrateful, especially during the teenage years. They, they zap you of your life. It's, and so, you know, I've had this premise for ever, since day one. It's what has stopped me you know, from having children of my own. And they, they, they demonstrated it very, very well here. And that is, is that if you're going to raise your children correctly, and don't get me wrong, most parents don't, then you have to look at it effectively as the day that you have children is the day you commit suicide. Your life's over. It's it done. From that day forward, everything that you do should be about preparing that child to succeed and prosper in life. That includes tough love, not being their friend, answering their questions, guiding them, being a role model, not necessarily uh, how bad you are, but the best self that you could put forward. Um, there's no more going to the bar every night and getting drunk, boo hoo. There's no more getting together with the guys to go to the strip joints. There's no more getting together with the girls to go to the bars and dance. It's over done it's committed suicide and then this film took it a step further which i really appreciated and it shows you how it doesn't just alter your lifestyle but it alters you you know it it turns you into this just you know it was it was demonstrated perfectly in in the brilliant scene in the car with the mom and the daughter where the mom pulls the typical mom bs you and your brother are all I have, and you don't talk to me, and it hurts me when you cut me out, blah, 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 blah. And the daughter says, it's not my fault you have no life. And that was perfect, brilliant, because that's what happens. These parents, you know, you have kids, and they're your whole life, and you, you lose everything. You lose all the opportunities. A wonderful, wonderful scene where, where Nicolas Cage has built a pool table and then absolutely destroyed it and then reminisced about just all the things that he's lost by making this terrible, terrible decision. And yes, people will jump in the comments section and say, well, you know, that's just part of it. And once they're grown, it's all wonderful. It's too late. It's too late. You have squandered, for most people, your 20s and your 30s, or your 30s and your 40s, without any life, raising terrible, unappreciative children, and now you wake up, and you can't get any of that back. You've lost all of it. 
And that was displayed here. Absolutely wonderfully, and so I totally applaud the movie. If for nothing else, and just making the rest was good, but that was, was a little extra something on a little deeper level that I wasn't really 100% certain that I was going to get. It is dislikes time, and it's not a perfect movie, so it does have two, uh, two uh, issues. One is a complete personal one. Very few people would agree with this. Ignore for a moment if you, if you care to. But for me, they did not show the children's death as graphic enough as they should, only because of my utter, totally complete hatred of children. I understand why they didn't do it. <laughs> But they're not going to get an NC-17. They want this to be seen. So I understand that. But for me, I did not like that. But number two is much more important. Much, much more important and very relevant. It actually has to do with the end of the movie. At the end of the movie, there is a couple of different scenes. One is the teenage girl's black boyfriend being hit with a mallet, a meat tenderizer, in fact, flying off the second story guardrail, smashing on the steps, falling to the ground, okay? He's dead, and if he's not dead, his back is broken. He's done, he's out of the picture. What happens? He shows up at the very end to save the day. Not cool. Bad, bad writing. Number two, daughter gets walloped with the meat tenderizer. Ten minutes later, she's up without a scratch on her face. She would have lost a jaw, uh, you know, uh, an eye socket because she got hit in the face and she'd be down. She'd be out. Um, it's a real tragedy and it stands out extra because up until that point, you've been pretty solid. Um, you know, it was a bit of a stretch when, you know, Nicolas Cage gets blown through the wall and he's relatively okay. Uh, I get why it was done. Towards the end, there was a lot of kind of funny stuff, almost Three Stooges-esque, and I got that. But then, when you get to the resolution, you really should not be doing that stupid crap. You know, the boyfriend saves the day, even though he's dead or has a broken back. And the daughter's all fine, even though she just took a meat tenderizer to the face. Unforgivable, boys and girls. Unforgivable. Alright, it is pinhead time. And honestly, um, it, I said, was not perfect. I had the dislike. It was a pretty big one. But, man, did I ever love all the rest of it. And not just the killing kids. It got into a little bit of a deeper level. Um, and even though I didn't like that they didn't kill the kids as graphic as I wanted to, there still was a fair amount of gore, so that was good too. I forgot to mention it. So, boom, as this one winds up, it's going to be a four pinhead movie. All right, I'm sure I've pissed off quite a few parents. Uh, you're probably going to yell in the comment section below. That's cool. However, if you saw the movie and would like to comment on it, Boom, do that as well. While you're here, subscribe to the channel, click the notification button, and like this video.